All right, so let's say you start to move and even after doing all that work, videos uh, one and two, you actually get on the walk. Oh, by the way, those links will be down below for you on YouTube. But anyway, you get out on the walk and the dog is bolting forward like crazy, ready to seize the, the neighborhood. You still gotta put the work in here. And so this is especially key for, for dog walkers and pet sitters, that's why I wanted to shoot these videos, is if the dog just bolts forward, you're just gonna turn and come back. Now maybe they need to potty really bad. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you can let a little bit go if you know that's the case, but you wanna be careful letting too much of that go. They'll drag you out the door, down the stairs to their spot, and that, that can be a real, a real problem. I say down the stairs, because there's a lot of people in apartment, you know, apartment areas that do the dog walking and stuff. Let's go. Good. So I'm keeping my arms straight and I'm just doing pressure guidance. Just slowing him down a bit. You don't get to where you want to go by pulling. Now if I needed to, he's doing good, but let's say he's not. <laughs> if I needed to, I want a loose leash and a little sideways pop and release. Good, I surprised him. <laughs> He's an easily surprised pity. Now I got my first clean turn. Look at that. Good job, buddy. Get some eye contact. Now I'm gonna release him to do his business. Now, unless you see a number two who coming, <laughs> I love talking about these things, don't let your dog drag you to Timbuktu. If I see my dog starting to poop, I will walk with him, no big deal. But if I give him an inch, that's why I love using Rufus for this. If I give Rufus an inch, even with him being trained, you can tell he's trained, boy, he takes a mile. So if he was to pull and I was to go with him and he feels tension on the leash, and I move with him instead of him moving with me, that will be our whole walk. <laughs> and then I'll be fighting that, that pity excitement drive the, the whole time. Because he's just, he's opportunistic. And that's not just excited pities, that's all of your dogs. The difference is you get a little one versus, versus a, a thick one <laughs> that can drag you down the street. But I just want you guys to keep in mind that anytime there's tension on the leash, even if they're going to potty and they're pulling, if you go with them, you're telling them it's okay to pull. And then you're trying to tell them it's not okay to pull when they see a person or a dog. It doesn't make sense to them. So anyway, go potty, break. You just be a treat. You just hold on to the end of the leash and just be a treat. Now I'm a, I can move a little bit, but I'm just neutral. And if I feel like, if I, feel like I uh, need to move them along a little bit, I can just be like, break, go on, go potty. I can take, <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> Um, I can take a step, you know, and just kind of unlock them if they get stuck sniffing. But mostly, I just stay stationary. They've got four to six foot of leash on this side and this side. Um, for potties, I suggest six foot leash. That's my personal preference. Ooh, we got a poo too. All right. So anyway, guys, hopefully that gives you, I, I know it's just a potty break, but when you're training a dog in a city, especially a an environment in a busy neighborhood or a condominium or something like that, a condo, it's really important all of these steps. When it comes to walking a dog as a dog walker or pet sitter, it's not about some perfect heel or eye contact on you all the time or being able to walk by every dog. It's just about a loose leash walk. That's it. So if the dog starts to pull, before, try to, before the dog reaches the full extension of the leash, you turn and you do it over and over and over again. And you mix it with stop and sit. The big thing that I notice, and I noticed back when I would walk dogs, is that dog walkers would try to keep the dog they're walking their attention, but then they would let them reach out and sniff. And it was really confusing for the dog and if the dog slows down to sniff the human would slow the the owner or the dog walker would slow down with them which is also confusing and then expect them to keep up or not pull you, you got to choose your rules and stick with them you can't muddle them so there's no stopping to sniff there's no uh choosing when you go where you go how you go 
It's we keep moving. And if you start to venture out ahead before that leash gets taut, I want to turn and get the dog in tune with me. I'll incorporate lots of stopping and sitting, like I mentioned. Now, if the dog is really driving, you could throw in a pup. This was really, really hard for him. So I gave him leash tension and kept him moving. That was enough. But then when I stopped right away and had him sit, he hit the end of the leash and it gave him a little pop. So you want to incorporate this stuff. I also like the body language. See how I kind of move in and face him a little bit to get his attention? And I'm waiting several seconds. There's another one. Several seconds before I move on. That way everything is nice and slow. It's not sit and move. It's sit, pause, breathe, move. Now right here... If you're not comfortable giving a dog you know, like any sort of pop communication, because it's not always a correction, but then just give some space from the grass. Be at the very, very edge of the sidewalk. That's another really important aspect to this. Another trick when I was walking dogs, and still now that I use, is when I'm checking in with my dog a lot and my arm is down, instead put your arm in the small of your back when you're walking like you saw me doing earlier. And then that way, they creep ahead at all. You're going to feel it with the back of your leg and you can give pressure backwards or start your turns. But it can really help your posture. Look forward, head up, feel the dog through the leash more than your arm being down to the side. With reactive dogs, that can get a little tricky. You kind of want to have control of the dog before you put your, your hand in the small of your back. But it's really helpful. Now, I got a distraction coming up. People getting out of their car. Do not try to pass by every little thing. Don't try to manage the dog's emotions. Just turn and walk the other way. Go at least 10 steps in the opposite direction. And then if you want, cross the street and then go back the way you were going. 